Hello everybody, this is Bud and I have uh, some serious stuff here to show you uh, related to XFCE applications that are used outside of the XFCE desktop environment. Like we have here, we are using uh, XFCE panel and also Thunar uh, is running outside of the XFCE uh, desktop environment and I know that at least Thunar is a very common file manager uh, to use together with i3 or whatever you know and this is probably something that um, an issue I will show you now that you might have encountered without even knowing it and I will show you how to fix it the solution system D but uh, stay tuned here this is quite interesting I think um, Let's do this. Let's open a terminal and then we can do systemctl user status just to see here our uh, user services um, and we have a Thunar uh, daemon here. There it is, our Thunar daemon service. This is our custom Thunar daemon service that we have created. I will now stop that to make sure that Thunar is not running. We can also do this, pid of Thunar it's running uh, system CTL user stop Thunar daemon and then pido it's not running good because this is most people don't use systemd like this um, but it will apply anyways so let's say you are running the Thunar daemon daemon like that then we can open a new terminal because this is actually easiest to have a couple of terminals open like this to demonstrate what's going on. We start Thunar and since it's the daemon is running, that is what is actually controlling all running Thunar processes. Uh, that works and this is probably very common uh, to use Thunar like this. And um, let's say we open a file from Thunar. Uh, edit uh, bash rc with leafpad. So this leafpad instance that was actually started from Thunar now and that means that leafpad this leafpad window is actually a child process of Thunar so look at this now when I terminate the daemon just by pr pressing ctrl c in this term uh, in the terminal where the daemon is running you see it also terminates leafpad uh, and this would be true if it was an image, if it was uh, if you opened an MP3 file and listened to that, and this this happens, that would also terminate everything that was started from Thunar. Uh, that is not so nice, uh, and it can even be very very bad if it's uh, like an important document. As you can see, it just terminated Leafpad there. It wouldn't save save uh, changes wouldn't be saved if it was an unsaved document. Uh, yeah, you can just imagine the, the issues th this can cause. Um, there is a way to do this properly. Let's do the same thing. Thunar daemon, Thunar window, open bash rc with leafpad. Because there is actually a command line option you should use if you know that you want to, to terminate Thunar. You should use Thunar quit. And that you can see the daemon is stopped now and Thunar is not running but it didn't terminate uh, leafpad it, it kind of sorts that stuff out so it doesn't terminate like these uh, uh, child uh, processes and that is probably what you want you know it's a very good thing to have um, the solution is system D but you will see that we have this, the same issue is actually in our current configuration. I just figured this thing out. If I knew this properly, I would have shown you earlier, but um, I'm showing you now. Um, if we start our Thunar Daemon systemd service again, that is kind of the same thing now as running this. Uh, that means we can start it like this and we can open bash rc with leafpad again from Thunar, like this, and system CTL user stop Thunar daemon, same thing, because it is really the same thing almost as pressing ctrl c here 
to, to terminate the Thurnar Demon. It's not exactly the same thing because it's actually sending the terminate signal. That is what system D is doing. When you say stop, it will send the terminate signal to the, uh, the process it started. Uh, and this is actually the interrupt signal, but whatever. Um, but what we actually would like to do here with system D is to have system D instead do this. Thunar quit, since we know that works, that gracefully terminates Thunar. Um, instead of uh, doing this. And you will see how this fixes everything. It's not just uh, because you, you very rarely do this, stop Thunar Demon. But uh, you might do this, uh, start Demon, Thunar, do it again here, because we need it as an example, open leaf pad. Uh, this is not that rare that you restart Sometimes you feel like, hey, Thunar is stuck or, or whatever, and then you restart the Thunar daemon uh, system D service here. But that also uh, terminates leafpad there. Because what restart, that is, in a way, that's just an alias for stop and start in the same command. So it will first stop the, the service exactly the same way as here, and then it will start the service exactly as it does when you do start. Uh, but all of this can be fixed, or let's stop it actually, so we can, and then we modify it while it is stopped. Because we have our, let's open leafpad now normally from D menu, and open our Thunar daemon service in our system D configuration here. We have it here. Yeah, I commented out the lines here. That is the fix, because as you can see exec start that is what starts the command that starts the process but you can also add exec stop and exec stop is the command to execute after this command um, yeah is done uh, after and when you use stop and restart it's after it have terminated that process it will then execute stop here uh, but this will of course not work either if you just add exec stop that means it will still terminate it by sending the terminate signal and then execute thunar quit and that might actually be even more problematic here now since it have just terminated it and then it will try to quit it with another command line it's not the correct thing to do uh, but after making the last video i actually kept reading some of the systemd man pages and there is one good man page here uh, systemd.kill, which explains a bit about uh, um, how processes are terminated and that you can um, fine tune that by using, for example, the kill mode option here. And that is what I have found is the solution because kill mode by default, it's control group and control group kind of terminates everything that was started by that process by default. Um, but if you set it to process instead, then it will only kill uh, the process that it started. So in this case, Thunar Demon. So kill mode process actually works as well. But I have found that in this case, it's actually better to set kill mode none. And what it does with none is that it will not do anything. When you say Thunar uh, system or system CTL user stop Thunar Demon, when kill mode none is set, it will simply not do anything. And then it will execute the stop command. And that is where the magic sauce here is. So then it will always, when you say stop, it will just simply execute Thunar quit. And that gracefully quits Thunar. And that is exactly what we want. Um, and I kind of like to group them, these two like this. Just to make it a bit more clear, it doesn't matter the order here, you enter the options. Um, but if we set up our Thunar Demon service like this and start it, and then we can start a Thunar window here, open bash RC, like this. Now, if we do Thunar stop daemon or system ctl stop thunar daemon you will see 
that it will not terminate our bash rc window there and it doesn't now it works this is what you want and this also works with uh, restart on failure as well which is really cool in my opinion let's close these windows here because we have restart on failure in case the demon would get unexpectedly killed somehow it will uh, try to restart it without this fix it will actually restart it the wrong way uh, which means terminates child wind uh, processes and stuff like that but now it will actually also do that properly it's really nice uh, so thunar open bash rc with leaf pad and then i guess i know it's a bit messy here now um, let's make it a tab layout and then i will open lx task and i will move it to the right to the right like that and then we try to find our thunar process here because it's only one thunar process the thunar demon process and if um, without the correct settings here killing it from here should also terminate that bash rc window but now you will see that it will restart Thunar demon, but it doesn't kill bash rc. It doesn't restore of course the Thunar windows when you do this It will actually kill all Thunar windows will get destroyed, but at least uh, You save like documents and stuff like that that you have opened and this is kind of important that this is set up correctly I have never seen anyone talk about this thing regarding Thunar uh, and Thunar is a quite common program to use you know even without xfce and if you are using Thunar, I strongly recommend you set it up like this with uh, a systemd uh, unit and start that unit uh, instead of starting Thunar daemon and then you have a secure uh, or a much better uh, uh, Thunar <laughs> process. That's what I wanted to, to say here. Um, yeah, we can save that too. To the end here because this also applies to xfce panel the exact same thing uh, but here it's almost even more serious and more common that you encounter this issue and here it is if you start a program from a uh, whisker menu here for example i, I guess let's do the same thing let's uh, stop um, xfce panel service So now it's not controlled by system D. Then we start it manually from this terminal, XFC4 uh, panel, um, disable WM check. There, now it's running from here. And uh, let's say we open, let's say we open power control. The reason I wanted to really make sure it wasn't running from system D is we have restart on failure there as, there as well because here it's almost easiest to show here if I kill this XFC4 panel process. Yes. All right. Yeah. It's I, I get a bit random results here. It killed it, but now it didn't kill the power control uh, window. Um, all right, but uh, let's let's do it like this then. Do the same thing. Start it from the terminal open power control it doesn't really matter uh, that it it is a bit random here it just highlights how annoying this really is and serious you know and if i do a control c then in this uh, terminal you see it also closed power control but what we actually closed or terminated was the panel you don't want that you really don't want that because imagine if you have uh, if you are a content youtube creator you know uh, you have a virtual box set up and then you start virtual box from whisker menu and you have uh, spent a lot of time configuring that virtual box and then you by mistake kind of restart the panel and it just terminates the virtual box immediately uh, like a hard hard <laughs> crash of that program it's not good and it can happen for anything you start here from whisker menu we'll have this issue and this is uh, it's not related to system d this is how xfce it, it's actually in a in one of the core libraries of xfce where uh, that uh, manages starting applications 
XFC EUI spawn or something like that is the function name. That is where the problem in quotation mark uh, is uh, is um, located. So this will be a problem if you are using XFCE programs outside of XFCE. And the only solution I know is actually to, to wrap them up in systemd units like this to make sure that they are terminated correctly here. Now we could see that the panel, it seemed to work to kill it here, but that might not always be the case. Also, XFCE panel has the same command line options uh, like Dunar there, xfc for panel help all. So it also have quit and also restart here. If you're using restart, by the way, uh, you should also use the uh, SM client disable and disable WM check when you use that. But you never need to do that with systemd here. It will restart, restart it properly. But the quit option is available for xfc panel as well. And you set it set it up exactly the same way as with Dunar. Um, open the XFC panel service. You can see I already have the stuff here, and here I have some extra things uh, which I thought can be like bonus material here because that is really um, system D related here now. But here these are the same options: kill mode non and XFC for panel quit. That will make sure it will never uh, terminate. Um, other programs started from the panel. Um, <clears throat> but what are what are these guys? Let, let's uh, talk a little bit about that. So first we stop the panel from the terminal, and then we start it properly now from with systemd. So systemctl start xfc for panel. Um, if you have watched the other system D videos I made here, I, I mentioned it briefly, and I think I also used to have this right. Uh, we I, I mentioned that it's a good idea to add wants dbus dot socket to XFC for panel because uh, I told you about an annoying um, error message that I often got with XFC for panel, and when I end, when I added this, I never saw that uh, error again. But I've actually found now a way to trigger that um, trigger that error, and it is as simple as doing xfc for panel quit. This only works when it's started by systemd because now it will send a debus signal. That is what this quit is actually doing. It will it will terminate xfc for panel, which in turn triggers uh, systemd's restart on failure. But yeah, it gets weird and you get the dbus message. This message, I got it from time to time uh, before I added this dbus dot. Oh, it's also supposed to say socket there. Um, I got this error message from time to time, but you can still get it actually when you do what I just did here, sending this. And as soon as you close this, it will start the panel as you can see. But this also gives us a clue here that uh, the name org.xfce.panel with a capital P was not provided by any service file. Uh, this is um, the bus name that XFCE panel registers at DBus. I don't know that much about DBus, but I know <laughs> this at least. And I also read about it briefly in, in the systemd documentation that if you add this option to a service unit, bus name, uh, that means that will automatically turn this service into type dbus. So you don't really need to write type dbus here if you have bus name. Uh, and bus name, there you have to type the, yeah, the bus name that this... Uh, the command, the main command here, uh, will register at dbus. So you kind of have to know <laughs> that ahead of time here, but we get the hint here that this is the name that XFCE panel wants to register, is org.xfce.panel. Um, this might look like a lot of work for whatever reason, but it actually makes this a little bit better uh, because now um, this service unit 
have the same capabilities as the i3 unit we looked at when we changed the type to notify so we could fine tune um, that uh, things started before and after and stuff like that. Now you can do the same thing for the, with this uh, XFCE panel uh, unit because um, Dbus kind of works the same way as Notify. When this is registered, then uh, System D know that this is ready, so to speak. Uh, so it's very much recommended to, to do this when you know uh, the bus name and stuff like that. It doesn't hurt at all, it just makes things better and can even make things faster for you. Uh, another benefit is that when it is of type D bus like this, you don't need to specify wants D bus. It will be uh, an implicit dependency. So this is the best way to set up um, XFCE4 panel. And the correct way to do it um, as a system D uh, service unit. And the same thing actually applies to Thunar. Uh, and we can trigger it uh, the same way. Because we are running systemctl user status Thunar daemon. Yes, it is running. Good. So if we do the same thing here, Thunar quit, we get a similar. We didn't. God damn it. I got it before. Uh, and I think, yeah, let's not even do it here because it really, it, it doesn't also, I, I haven't really, uh, I don't use this before, after here. And it is, is, it is really bonus material. But I think if you want to set it up for Thunar, I think it's org.xfce.filemanager. I think so. But I'm not 100% sure now. Kind of annoying that we didn't get the error. Is Thunar running now? Thunar or PID of Thunar? No. Why don't I get this <laughs> DBUS error when I want it? Okay then, okay then. Okay, whatever. Or at least on SUSE, you can also cheat by looking at the Thunar service that is installed together with Thunar for some reason. There is actually a systemd user unit in uh, this directory, usr lib systemd user, and this, this is probably true on other Ah, here we can see Dunst service also. Interesting. Um, user lib system D user. You may or you may not have doing our service there. So this is not our service. And we can see that this is actually configured uh, the bus type. It does kill mode process, but I think we are doing the better way here. Uh, manually setting up the quit command is, is uh, in my opinion, more correct. But this would also work to set it up like this. And here we can see the bus name that they use are file manager with the camel case in file manager. Uh, so let's copy this to our, to our uh, uh, um, Thunar daemon service. type dbus and I guess this is in my opinion the correct way to set up to set up um, Thunar and really emphasize this you should do this even if you're not doing what we do uh, starting a complete systemd controlled x session you can still just set up one single unit like this and uh, wherever it is where you uh, do this command Thunar daemon is it in your x init I don't know instead you do system ctl user start Thunar daemon service this is the command you should use to start Thunar instead of this and set it up like uh, wrap it in a uh, service unit like this it will fix that issue that if Thunar is accidentally terminated in the wrong way it will not 
<laughs> crash your uh, documents that you have opened, which is really nice that it doesn't do that anymore. And I have been using it like that for ever since I started using Linux, basically. I've always used Thunar, I think. Uh, so, and I have never set this up properly before, but now <laughs> I have, so now I don't have that issue. Thing is, I, I, it's quite rare that I um, start things from Thunar, actually. I don't, I, I very rarely uh, do this. Uh, but I do sometimes, and I, I now when I know about it, I know that this has happened to me. But this, I do this all the time, start applications from Whisker menu. That is kind of the point of Whisker menu, is starting applications. And I have also restarted the XFCE panel often and not really understanding what's going on, why some applications all of a sudden are missing, so to speak. Now that doesn't happen anymore. Um, the other way to do this properly is to just use XFCE. And when you do this, it's not a problem. It is taken care of by the XFCE for session program has all of this stuff set up. So then you will not experience these issues, but using Thunar or XFCE panel outside XFCE desktop environment, these issues are, are a serious uh, real thing. Um, I kind of discovered this uh, by accident while recording another video, uh, which was what I intended on uploading now, but uh, I guess that will be the next video. Uh, and that is about lock screens and logging out and uh, screen savers and uh, things like that. Uh, it will be a fun one, uh, but this, uh, this one is a, was an important one. So thank you for watching. Uh, see you in the next video. Um,